G'day, Mr. Wimble here. I'm a history teacher, and I've got a couple of videos showing students how to analyze sources using Tamakpru, type, origin, motive, audience, content, perspective, reliability, and usefulness. It's just a simple acronym, so students remind and tick off the right kinds of questions they're supposed to be asking when they're looking at a historical source. But often students struggle when they actually try and put it into practice. So I thought what I might do is make a couple of videos of me looking at a historical source and just going through the method and just showing people how I ask those questions and what conclusions I come up with when I ask them. Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it gains a bit of an insight into the process. Let's see how we go. All right, as you can see, I've really gone high tech with this. I thought it would just be worthwhile just sticking with the basics. So. I've jumped on the Library of Congress website, the US Library of Congress that is, and I've found a source here. Britishers, you're needed, come across now. That's the source. Let's have a look at the caption information. We've got the creator here, Lloyd Myers, he's the artist. We know it's a print poster, it's a lithograph. Summary showing two men on a globe sh shaking hands across the Atlantic, a man in a suit reaches across, etc., etc. We'll have a look at that. So, we've got some context now. It's a poster. We know when it was published, 1917. Let's have a look at the poster itself. Let's start with type. We know it's a poster. And we also know it's a primary source. Okay, what have we got? Origin. Let's have a look at origin. Let's get a different color. Let's make this fun. Different color for origin. Where did it come from? Well, we know it was published in 1917 from the caption from the Library of Congress. Usually you've got author or something in the bottom. What's down here? No, nope, that's the printers. Ah, oh, here we go. British and Canadian Recruiting Mission. British and Canadian Recruiting Mission. Okay, let's call them BCRM. All right, that's helpful for us. So we know that the poster, it's a primary source. 1917, it was printed slash published, and the British and Canadian recruiting mission. That'll help us probably with the next one, you'd have to say. So if we're looking for a motive, well, straight away, we are helped out with that little R there, recruiting. So these guys are trying to recruit people. Who are they trying to recruit? And what are they trying to recruit them for? Well, if we have a look, hopefully it's relatively straightforward. This guy's a soldier. And he's asking this guy to come across to Great Britain and France. In 1917, we use the knowledge already available to us and say, World War One's occurring. There's a good chance this guy is trying to get this other guy to come across and fight. Who in particular, though? Note that. Not asking Americans. Asking Britishers. Note that. Britishers, you're needed. All right, so, so they're trying to get people who identify with Britain to come and fight in the war with them. All right, so that's, that's kind of very helpful for, for motive. They're trying to recruit people who identify with Britain to come across the Atlantic and fight with them. All right, audience. We've kind of already, oh, I've used a wrong color, haven't I? Let's get another color. Let's go with red. Audience. Who have we got for audience? Obviously this guy. Alright, we know he's from the United States. We know he identifies with being British from the British's comment. You can also see he's relatively well-dressed. Alright, he's a dapper-looking fella. So obviously the, the, the recruiters aren't looking for any kind of riffraff. They're looking for people who see themselves as respectable citizens who want to go over and do their bit for the mother country, for Britain, people who identify as Britishers. That's our audience. Okay, what about content? Let's get a ooh, pink. Let's get content sorted. We've got the basics. Britishers, that's who it's talking about. You're needed. It's making a demand of them. You are needed. Come across now. Come across to where? Well, it's obviously talking to people from the United States, and it's saying, come across the Atlantic to France and to Great Britain. So content-wise, we're seeing demands made in the text. Not just, you know, it'd be really nice if you thought about it. It's, you're needed, 
come across now, their demands. And we've got somebody who represents the British Tommy here. He's got his gun. He's in full uniform. He's taking the Britisher, the American, by the hand and welcoming him across the Atlantic to help out. So there's our, there's our content. Helpful. All right. What about perspective? What about perspective? Well, from this point of view, we're looking at and thinking through, well, British and Canadian recruiting mission. So it's people of the British Empire. And they are obviously identifying strongly with Americans. And they're obviously seeing the war as a relatively positive thing. This guy's well-dressed. He looks stern. He looks serious. He looks like he's really kind of needing help. He's earnestly coming over. They're grabbing hands. So the perspective, you would say, is looking at um, people from Britain representing uh, people who are to do with the war, and they're asking Britishers who are in the United States to come and help them out. Well, I've done it again. What about reliability? Well, because we've talked about perspective, all right, we should have talked about bias here. Okay, so reliability and perspective are kind of similar. Perspective is probably, and sorry about that, I probably should have talked a little bit about bias here. So let's do that before we talk about reliability. From a bias point of view, this is obviously a very biased source. This is a poster. It's trying to convince people to do something. Yeah, you're needed. Come across now. This is the type of poster that is making a demand of people and really asking them to change their entire life. So it's obviously from that point of view, uh, biased. They're, they're asking something to happen. So it's going to present, say, the British officer in the best light possible. It's going to present the people he's talking to in the best light possible. And you obviously don't see anything to do with the war. There's no like, here's the horrors of war or anything like that. It's a simple poster demanding that they come. So from a biased point of view, it's biased obviously towards the war. And we can see that from uh, the respectability of both figures, uh, their sternness of expression, uh, their seriousness, uh, the idea of Britishers. So it's seeking for people from the United States to identify with their British heritage here. So that's where the bias is found. How reliable is it? Well, that's kind of when we're looking about authenticity. And that's when we say, well, it has come from the Library of Congress. So straight away, a relatively reputable organization. Not only that, it's a, it's a poster. It's a poster, so it's going to be relatively easy to cross-check, isn't it? You wouldn't think a single poster was made, but that this would have been made a whole different bunch of places, and you would be able to cross-check this with other libraries, with private collections, and make sure that what as is presented here in the Library of Congress for this piece is as it was in the other pieces. So reliability, relatively reliable. All right, what about usefulness? What about usefulness? This is something that, that students struggle with a lot. How useful is this? See, the question really defeats you if you're asking it that way. How useful is this? Because it depends entirely on the context of what it's useful for. To say it's uh, somewhat biased, therefore not useful, isn't helpful. Really, what you should be asking is, how can this be used? What would it be useful for? So, for example, if a historian was to say, ask the question, how useful is this source in showing accurately what the war really was like? Well, it's not a very useful source. If a historian was asking, how useful is this to show recruiting methods of the British and Canadian recruiting mission? Well, it's a very helpful source. So make sure you couch whatever answer you'll have for usability or usefulness, I should say, in thinking through exactly what it's being used for and then coming up with an answer that actually shows, well, if it was, if the question was, was is it useful for this? Well, here's, you know, here's the exact examples that show you why it's useful. 
etc., etc. Hopefully, this is a helpful example to show you guys what I would think about when I'm using to MacPro to analyze a primary source in World War One.